Welcome back to the Gratu Orloff television program, once again brought to you in color from Mount Gratu, Pennsylvania. How are you motherfuckers doing today in this beautiful July the 6th, 2022? We here at the Gratu Orloff Inspirational Televangelical Network are dedicated to bringing back memories. Memories of old comic books and records and music and all kinds of shit like that. So our host, Gratu Orloff, will be along in a, in a minute. But right now, let's, uh, let's go back in time. Close your eyes and remember. Do you remember the times of your life? The uh, wonderful feeling when you went into a, co a, a, a corner drugstore and saw the new comic books on the spinner rack. Yes, all those wonderful memories that uh, come spinning back to your uh, brain damaged, uh, diseased mind. Uh, again, it's uh, July, I believe, the 6th, 2022, in the year of our Lord, here in uh, Gratu, uh, Mount Gratu, uh, up here in Alaska. We've been uh, sorting through comic books and building the collection back better, as our hero here, Klaus Schwab, he's, he's our hero here on the Gratu Orloff Network. And uh, once again, the Gratu Orloff Show is brought to you by... Pine needle tea bags. So, and also, oh, our other sponsor. Have you tried <clears throat> frosty root beer? It's uh, it's nutritious and delicious. It's uh, bottled by the Frosty franchisee under the appointment of the Frosty Company in Camden, New Jersey. It contains carbonated water, sugar, natural, and artificial flavors, and caramel color added. See, it says it there, right? And uh, our other sponsor, we have a new sponsor here today on this wonderful Wednesday morning. Unfortunately, I already drank it, but it's uh, Jet, Jet, Jet Up Space Age Beverage. How about that? Yes, Jet Up. Jet Up Space Age Beverages. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and um, if you're thinking about getting married, you might want to purchase one of these for your fiance from the Mark Jewelers Company. A uh, Batman ring, all, all uh, girls love that. But anyway, uh, with no further ado, let's uh, head on up to the third floor and uh, start uh, start with uh, the process of going through the comics. So we turn off the lights here because we don't leave, want to leave a large carbon footprint because of all those starving Chinese children in the rainforest will uh, not have electricity to power up their VCRs and uh, we don't want that to happen. And uh, so we uh, have the a modern elevator here that will take us on up to the third floor. So let's head on up. We've got some. Uh, we've got the elevator log loaded up with some boxes and magazines and toys that I want to take up to the third floor. Third floor is where we've been doing most of our comic book sorting and organizing lately. Um, put up a video last night. It takes forever for these videos to load on my old iPhone and you know um put up a video yesterday I started um yeah I don't I think I started uploading it to YouTube and um shit it must have been about four in the three or four in the afternoon it didn't finally get on YouTube until about midnight. I don't think many people have seen it yet. <clears throat> so no further ado let's uh Come on in. All right. So, 
comic books. We're back. We're back to it, man. This is like real work. So you might see some interesting comics that stimulate some memories or flibble your jibble, or maybe you'll see a bunch of trash that you wouldn't wipe your ass with. Probably a combination of both here on the Gratu Orloff Inspirational Network. Okay, what do we have here? It's a reprint of an old showcase Green Lantern issue. How about that one? Well, let me uh, reposition the uh, Gratu camera. Okay, so this goes into this box under S for uh, showcase. Um, So, uh, it's kind of a cold, drizzly morning here. It's not cold, but it's drizzly here in uh, Mount Gratu, Connecticut. And uh, how are you guys doing today? <laughs> it's a wonderful day. Hey, guys, if you're uh, still alive tonight at uh, around 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, um, tune on in to the Graphic Man Inspirational Color Network and watch the Four Color Fossil Show. I'm making a, I will be a, uh, on there as well with the panel of noted comic book historians, and uh, you should enjoy that. You can just DVR the debut of Big Brother and watch that later if you're addicted to that trash like I am. All right. So, I'm going to put this with that, with the other showcase, uh, Silver Age Classics, rather, is what they're called. Uh, yeah, Silver Age Classics. Uh, someone said the other day that these are starting to become valuable, that people are seeking these out now. They used to be in the dollar bin back in the 1940s. All right. This is a Marvel team up, Spider-Man. And the Fantastic Four. How about that? It's issue 133. Most people agree that under issue 100 they're better. But this is 133, so what can you do? Marvel team up. There's 139, 119. Let's put this here. I probably have almost a complete set of Marvel team up. Oh, here's another Silver Sable, uh, number one. I, I said to you last night, I have a bunch of these. This is uh, comic books in Braille for uh, young children that, you know, you can feel, oh, okay, it's a girl. There's their, you know, it's comic books in Braille. They did that a lot in the 90s because they really cared about their blind uh, readers. So they would uh, make sure all the boobs were raised up and the butts on the front covers of their uh, comics. But no, I don't mean to denigrate or ridicule this comic. I like Silver Sable. It's just, uh, all the 90s gimmick covers are kind of cheese ball. But at least this is the only cover for Silver Sable number one, as far as I know. Maybe they did a flat one too. But back then, the good thing, if you can say anything good about the 90s, is they didn't do 40 it's issue one, let's do 40 different variant covers, you know. One in 20, one in 50, you know, I don't know. Some You might love that. To me, that's a little cheese ball. See, I've got, I've got tons of copies of this issue. And I, I, don't, I, I shouldn't be like some dragon that hoards everything, so I don't know why I have multiple copies. I really only need one or two, so... Thinking of opening a little miniature comic store because this town, there's not one around for many miles. Or selling them online to you wonderful folks out there. Why, it's uh, number two in a two issue limited series. That's a very limited mini series, two issues. 
You know, another thing I'm having trouble finding after this big move, we just moved from uh, uh, Texas to the jungles of Venezuela and uh, here in Mount Gratu, Venezuela, and, and I, I cannot find the graphic novel of the Silver Surfer that's Jack Kirby and, and Stan Lee. I cannot find my Pebbles Flintstone doll from, and you say, why Gratu, you're, you're, you're a boy, why do you want a little doll? Well, I like it, so F you, and it's missing. And I'm missing a big hot rod trophy too. So that's uh, upsetting. But I thought I had a lot more stuff missing, but, uh, so I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. What do you want from me, man? What do you want? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you want? You wanna watch me cry? You wanna see me squirt out tears like a fucking baby, man? Is that what you wanna see? You ain't gonna see that, motherfucker. Um, you know, I'm really enjoying this new press secretary for, uh, Biden. She, she seems to really know what she's doing. She's very well spoken. She's really, really pretty good. Yeah, this bag is very, uh, very jibbled. And uh, it doesn't present well. So we're going to deep six this bag. And someday, <laughs> it'll never happen. Someday, hopefully, I'll, I'll be able to buy some bags and boards. Um, but perhaps when Trump returns, the return of the king, and the evil uh, is driven from Middle Earth, this is Silver Surfer and Warlock being resurrected. Two cosmic heroes. Oh my gosh, lots of devil stuff going on in these comics. Yeah, this is 19, This is the 1990s, man. Silver Surfer and Warlock Resurrection. It's, I'm sure this is a key issue to somebody. Silver Surfer and Warlock Resurrection. Question is, do you file it under S for Silver Surfer or W for Warlock? You'll have to buy two copies to file one under W and one under S. For your warlock and for your silver server collection. The man called Nova. How about that? I understand that uh, they're making a movie out of him. I'm so excited. Uh, the man called Nova, number six. Nova. That In Spanish, that means he doesn't go. Nova means doesn't go. I believe that's the truth. I, I do believe so. I do believe so. Um, you ever listen to X-22? He's not on YouTube. you got to go to uh, Rumble and listen to X-22. He's a very good political commentator. But he always says, I do not... I, I do believe this to be true. I do believe it. Okay. New Mutants. Night Nurse. N Nova. Before Peter Parker. Oh, it's another Nova. How about this? It's number uh, number eight. And here's Nova number ten. Shit. How about that? How about that one? Eight, ten. Astonishing, huh? Here's the champions, number fourteen. With Ghost Rider rescuing uh, Black Widow from a uh, bunch of bugs, man. Champions. Catwoman, Conan, Daredevil. Yeah, I'm... I'm organizing is what I'm doing. How about that? So these are all just at random. Here's uh, King Conan number one. Yeah. How about that? Here's King Conan number two. Yeah, for those of you that are new to comic collecting, um, which is probably none of you. Um, 
Let me show you something. This means that it was bought in a, uh, in a normal store where normal people go, like a drugstore or a bookstore. That's what the that's what it looked like. And then the UPC code down here, which was really comic books are better before UPC codes. Just as a general rule, when you're shopping for comics, look for comics that don't have UPC codes because they're going to be better as a general rule. Anyway, issue two. See how it looks different. This means it was sold in a store where normal people didn't go. It was sold in a comic book store where only strange nerds like us went. And uh, so if it's bought in a comic store, it's probably going to be preserved better because it's going to be bagged and boarded because it's bought by a nerd. Comics like this more than likely were bought by normal people. And then and comic collectors bought in both places. But... This means it was directly distributed. This, this means basically the stores like 7-Eleven carried comics. They had a spinner rack like uh, Oscar the Grouch was showing you earlier today. Um, and uh, if the comics that didn't sell, they would tear off the cover, sometimes just this part of the cover, and send it back and they'd get their money back. And then they would just give the cover, they were supposed to throw the coverless comics away. Sometimes they'd give them to kids or take them home to their children or whatever. Uh, but a book like this, this means it's direct, distrib direct distribution. And this means they couldn't send the book, if it didn't sell at the end of the month or whatever, they couldn't send it back and get credit. That Because they figure comic stores are buying it, comic stores will sit on it, they'll put it in their back. This is a Happy Days reference. The comic book uh, stores would uh, put it in their back room and wait for it to uh, 